Hello everyone, myself Rishabh More and I am a PhD student at Purdue University. My research involves simulation of dense particulate suspensions and predicting the rheology of dense suspensions. Um, so as a part of this mini lecture series, I will be familiarizing you all with uh, different aspects of suspensions and basics of suspension rheology. So uh, the literature in this field is very uh, vast and, and it, is a old, it is a very old field. So it, it will not be possible to deal with each and every aspect in this short amount of time. So I'll, I'll just be going over uh, the utmost basics of, of uh, mechanics of suspensions. Uh, so to, to start with, what is a suspension? A suspension is basically a material form um, when we have a bunch of particles suspended in a, in a fluid and depending on depending on the size of these particles they can be uh, they can be colloid or, or considered as suspension so colloids are basically nanometer size particles uh, and, and suspensions are usually particles with sizes greater than one micrometer and a and, um, very cool technique to know whether a material is suspension or not is uh, it's, it's the Tyndall effect where you just shine a ray of light through the material and and if it passes through the material then it is just a true solution it is a homogeneous solution and if the light cannot pass then this means that it is getting blocked due to the presence of particles and in that case it, it can be a colloid or a, or a suspension and why we care about suspensions because suspensions are everywhere around us in nature, mud and your blood are, are a type of suspensions and it is very important material which we need, which needs uh, handling and, and transport in, um, in industry. So coal slurry and uh, metal pests, paint and smoothies etc and biomass slurries are at all suspensions, particles suspended in a fluid medium. So as a result, it, it becomes important to be able to predict uh, the rheological properties of these materials under, under different flow conditions. Uh, so the most basic uh, rheological property is, is the viscosity as you, you uh, must have learned in your undergraduate courses. Viscosity is nothing but the measure of internal friction in a fluid uh, and, and it, it, it is a way of quantifying that uh, quantifying the resistance due to the fluid for its flow so usually uh, we look at a uh, covert type of uh, flow um, conditions where uh, you can quantify the the stress required for for moving uh, moving the upper plate with some velocity uh, and and the uh, and the and the shear rate here is basically the velocity of the plate divided by this distance between the two plates and then we know that shear stress is multiplication of shear rate and, and, and the viscosity and by measuring the shear, shear stress then we can quantify the viscosity. So in this lecture I'll, I'll mostly talk about viscosity. Uh, so uh, as you know much information can be gained by just doing a simple dimensional analysis. In, in this dimensional analysis, we write down all the variables that are important in the system and then how and, and then how we can group those variables in different dimensionless terms and how those dimensionless terms are then related. So if we just look at a system, let's say we have a suspension in a box and this box is filled with fluid and particles like this and let's say the particle size is given by A your gravity is acting in downward direction the fluid has viscosity eta naught and 
a density rho naught the particle density is rho p uh, and then we are shearing this uh, with a given shear rate gamma dot so if you just list down the variables you will see the variables are size of the particles the number density n of the particles so n is basically number of particles per unit volume then the gravity density of the particles density of the fluid and viscosity of this suspension viscosity of the carrier fluid then a Temperature is also important, so we usually write temperature in terms of Boltzmann constant multiplied by the temperature to quantify the thermal energy. And finally, let's say if the particles get close enough, there might be some interparticle short range interactions. And let's say those interactions are scaled with a force magnitude given by F0. And, fin and finally, one more important variable is, is the shear rate which is gamma dot so as you can see here we have 10 variables and the basic dimensions here are just mass length and time so three basic dimensions and that means if we use buckingham pi theorem that means there are 10 minus 3 7 pi terms we can find out all the pi terms I'll, I'll not spend much time on finding them out I'll, I'll just list them down here so first pi term is the relative viscosity which is just the ratio of the suspension viscosity to the carrier fluid viscosity second term is the volume fraction basically number of particles uh, the particle particle density times the volume of each particle then you have ratio of the density rho p by rho r rho naught there is something called shield parameter which basically scales the viscous forces acting on the particles with with the buoyancy forces then Reynolds number which is which gives us the relative magnitude between viscous and inertial forces Peclet number which basically scales the viscous forces and the thermal forces and finally we have we can we have a non-dimensional shear rate which basically is the scaling of the shear rate with with the interparticle force magnitude f naught so thus we have these seven important parameters and and the viscosity of the suspension is basically is a function of all these other six parameters so so relative viscosity is basically gives us the suspension viscosity and and it is a function of all the other pi terms volume fraction which quantifies the number of particles a shields parameter which tells us whether there will be sedimentation or no sedimentation so if shields parameter is very high that means the buoyancy force is small compared to the viscous force and and the particles will be able to remain suspended and density ratio which is which which is again important parameter reynolds number which tells us whether inertial forces will be important or not and and peclet number which will basically tell us whether Brownian forces will be important or not. So viscosity can be written as a function of all these parameters.
and and as you you can see there are six variables here and and already considering the effect of each of these is is a very complicated problem so so we can just look at an ideal suspension where we will simplify things so in an ideal suspension the particles are very small they are either nanometer or micrometer size so we can effectively consider their Reynolds number to be equal to zero and then that what that means is we will have Stokes flow and since theoretical expressions are available for Stokes flow equations we can use them then we will assume them to be non-Brownian so the Peclet number is very high and and we can ignore the dependence on Peclet number we will consider the particles to be neutrally buoyant so the density ratio is one that means the particles will always remain uh, suspended and the suspension will always be homogeneous and finally we will consider the uh, suspensions to be Newtonian uh, if you look at dense suspensions they are, they are highly Newtonian, non-Newtonian but for, for these ideal suspension we will just assume them to be Newtonian so what all these assumptions result uh, for uh, for the expression that I showed in the last slide is that we just know now that the suspension viscosity for an ideal suspension will depend only on only on the suspension volume fraction so that means the presence of the very presence of particles is, is leading to some sort of stress uh, and, and resistance to the flow so to to make make sense of this uh, dimensional analysis you we, we can consider two situations one is there is just pure fluid in in a cuvette geometry and and we are uh, applying a shear stress tau f as shown here to make the plate move and, and in other case you have fluid plus a bunch of particles are suspended in there so what do you think uh, will be the relationship between tau f and tau s so intuitively speaking we we kind of uh, we kind of pred can predict that the viscosity in the case of particle suspended will be higher than the pure fluid case right that's that's just because the presence of particles is resulting in uh, some additional resistance to the flow so that additional resistance is actually called particle stress and, and it can be it can be understood by by just considering a single particle in, in a in a shear flow so a shear flow can be um, split into two components one is rotational component uh, where the fluid is just doing a, a rotational motion and, and the other is this elong extensional com component where fluid is coming from one side and, and it, it is going in, in the other side so let's say we we have a single particle in this um, shear flow so um, what the uh, the effect of rotational flow on this particle will just be a simple solid body rotation of this particle and I, it is not leading to any significant stresses but if we consider a particle in a in an extensional flow then as you can see this fluid which is coming is trying to deform the uh, deform whatever material is at the center right and, and since this particle is um, rigid it, it it does not deform and as a result the streamlines need to curve around this particle so because of this um, because of this uh, non rigidity of the particle there are extra stresses and, and those stresses are known as particle stress and because of that you have uh, basically higher viscosity in the case when you have particles suspended in, in a fluid so to be able to quantify the uh, viscosity of a, of a suspension we need to be able to quantify the stress first so you can split you can write the stress as as a volume integral of of stress in the entire domain and then with this stress in the domain can be split into two parts one is 
the uh, the part which is coming from the fluid and the other is basically the part which is coming from the particle so this is known as the particle stress and the part the contribution which is coming from the fluid is basically some of some of the uh, hydrodynamic pressure and and eta times the deformation tensor and if we can quantify the stress coming from the particles we will basically have the total stress in the system and if we divide this by the shear rate then we will be able to find out the viscosity so so to calculate the particle stress we need to be able to know sigma p here and as it turns out bachelor in this uh, classical 1970 paper has shown that the stresslet uh, acting on the particle which which is given by this formula is gives us the uh, gives us the particle stress so all we need to do is basically calculate the stresslet and uh, do the sum for the stresslet for all the particles and and we will be able to get this particle stress so in 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 the case of dilute suspensions the particles are basically separated by a large distance compared compared to their sizes so in this case we can ignore ignore interparticle interactions and and the solution to stokes flow gives us basically this the expression for stresslet you you might have derived this in your low hydrodynamics class so the expression for uh, stresslet due to a single particle is this and if we just then sum sum this stresslet for all the particles you will find out that the contribution coming from the particles is is just 5 by 2 times the volume fraction so in this here 20 by 3 pi eta naught a cube can be written as 4 by 3 5 times 4 by 3 pi eta naught a cube and then this this gives us this factor of 5 by 2 here so since we can ignore interparticle interactions calculating the viscosity in the case in the case of uh, dilute suspensions is very easy and and this is a very well known famous formula given by einstein but in the case of semi dilute suspensions the particles are are nearby so we we also need to consider the interparticle interactions so that was again considered by bachelor and green in this 1972 uh, paper and what they found out that they just added higher order terms in the expression for uh, dilute regime so these higher order terms that they depend on the volume fraction square volume fraction cube and for semi dilute suspensions with volume fraction less than 10 percent this k turns out to be 7.6 for 7.6 for non-Brownian suspensions and 5.2 for Brownian suspension. So, so we now have theoretical equations for visco for predicting viscosity in dilute and semi-dilute. But but can we extend these to uh, dense uh, regime? So it turns out in in dense uh, uh, in dense regime, the lubrication interactions and, and many body interparticle interactions are very very complicated. Even though we, we know the solutions to Stokes equations, there is no way we can find out the multi body interactions. So, in that case, we need to rely on the experimental empirical data that has been collected over the decades, and, and then if you if we just plot all the experimental data there is a nice pattern that that emerges so all the experimental data it basically falls on a single curve if we dimension if, if we make if we scale the volume fraction by the maximum volume flowable volume fraction possible which is which is phi c and th this maximum flowable volume volume fraction is something like 0.5 
the maximum packing fraction so if, if you remember for a uh, for a bcc or, or a fcc uh, type of packing for bcc it is 64 percent and for fcc it is uh, 71 percent so so from fitting this experimental data against against the uh, scaled volume fraction uh, people are derived of constitutive law of the form 1 minus phi raised to some power some negative power minus lambda so what this means is as 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 the volume fraction approaches the maximum volume fraction the viscosity diverges and now let all of these studies they assume particles to be of same size but in suspensions particles can be of different sizes and, and let's say if you have small particles in addition to bigger particles then in that case the smaller particles can can occupy these interstitial spaces between bigger particles so what that means is the maximum fraction uh, volume fraction possible for a given configuration configuration it, it increases and and what that means is if we have polydispersity in the suspension then then since phi c is increasing we will we will have smaller viscosities compared to monodispersed suspensions for for the same uh, volume fractions again the scaling by maximum volume fraction is still valid the only thing is this maximum volume fraction will now depend on basically the particle sizes as well so that's something we need to take into account while dealing with polydispersed suspensions and again if we scale by the maximum packing fraction then again everything falls on the falls nicely on the same curve now suspension are not suspension are not ideal in in real life practical situations so in in real suspensions we we basically we basically have some kind of forces acting between the particles we might have different dens density ratio for particles and fluid we we might have uh, particles uh, inertia might be important but still if let's say the particles are micrometer size then inertia is, is is again negligible and let's say we somehow make the particles neutrally buoyant then still there is there is a four scale between the particles f naught which which we cannot uh, turn off like like the other variables so so in that case in addition to the volume fraction the uh, the viscosity will will also depend on on the shear rate so the viscos viscosity is shear rate dependent in 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 real suspensions so so all the empirical data suggests that uh, suspensions undergo a shear thinning uh, at low shear rates followed by uh, a newtonian play to where viscosity is almost a constant and then they undergo shear thickening that means their viscosity suddenly increases at high shear rates and finally they undergo another shear thinning at very high shear rates so this is highly highly non-newtonian and, and to be able to predict and quantify this behavior we we need to be able to model the uh, interparticle forces and, and their uh, magnitude so so a few of these interparticle forces are basically forces due to surface chemistry the particles might be adhesive there might be hydrogen bonds between between the particles or they, they can be contact forces so so in dense suspensions your average interparticle gap reduces uh, reduces as we as you increase the uh, volume fraction so because of that at some point the particles might come into direct contact and because of that there will be contact forces like like friction 
uh, or there can be electrostatic forces arising due to presence of charges so so to be able to predict rheology of uh, real suspensions we need to model the different forces uh, and, and then that gives us the uh, rate dependence so yeah that's that's all for this lecture uh, and we we basically looked at the how how the viscosity depends on on volume fraction and and what might be the origins for uh, non newtonian behavior in in the suspensions so if you have more question you can reach me at uh, at my perdivity